Claude Josephine Rose Claudia Cardinale, born 15 April 1938, is a Tunisian-born Italian film actress who starred in some of the most acclaimed European films of the 1960s and 1970s, mainly Italian or French, but also in many English-language films. Born and raised in La Goulette, a neighborhood of Tunis, Cardinale won the Most Beautiful Italian Girl in Tunisia competition in 1957, the prize being a trip to Italy, which quickly led to film contracts, due above all to the involvement of Franco Cristoldi, who acted as her mentor for a number of years and later married her. After making her debut in a minor role with Omar Sharif in Goha, Cardinale became one of the best-known actresses in Italy with roles in films such as Rocco and His Brothers, Girl with a Suitcase, Cartouche, The Leopard, and Fellini's Eight and a Half. From 1963, Cardinale became known in the United States and Britain following her role in The Pink Panther opposite David Niven. For several years, she appeared in Hollywood films such as Blindfold, Lost Command, The Professionals, Don't Make Waves with Tony Curtis, The Hell with Heroes, and the Sergio Leone epic western Once Upon a Time in the West, a joint U.S.-Italian production, in which she was praised for her role as a former prostitute opposite Jason Robards, Charles Bronson, and Henry Fonda. Jaded with the Hollywood film industry and not wanting to become a cliché, Cardinale returned to Italian and French cinema, and garnered the David Di Donatello for Best Actress Award for her roles in Il Giorno della Civetta, and as a prostitute alongside Alberto Sordi in A Girl in Australia. In 1974, Cardinale met director Pasquale Squitieri, who would become her partner, and she frequently featured in his films, including I Guapi, Corleone and Claretta, the last of which won her the Nastro d'Argento Award for Best Actress. In 1982, she starred in Werner Herzog's Fitzgeraldo as the love interest of Klaus Kinski, who raises the funds to buy a steamship in Peru. In 2010, Cardinale received the Best Actress Award at the 47th Antalya Golden Orange International Film Festival for her performance as an elderly Italian woman who takes in a young Turkish exchange student in Signora Enrica. Outspoken on women's rights causes over the years, Cardinale has been a UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador for the Defense of Women's Rights since March 2000. In February 2011, the Los Angeles Times magazine named Cardinale among the 50 most beautiful women in film history. Chapter 1, Early Life Claudia Cardinale was born Claude Josephine Rose Cardinale in La Goulette, a neighborhood of Tunis, French protectorate of Tunisia, on 15 April 1938. Her mother, Yolande Greco, was born in Tunisia to Sicilian emigrants from Trapani. Her maternal grandparents had a small shipbuilding firm in Trapani, but later settled in La Goulette, where a large Italian community existed. Her father, Francesco Cardinale, was a railway worker, born in Gela, Sicily. Her native languages were French, Tunisian Arabic, and the Sicilian language of her parents. She did not learn to speak Italian until she had already begun to be cast for Italian films. Cardinale was educated at the St. Joseph de l'Apparition School of Carthage, which she attended along with her younger sister Blanche. She then studied at the Paul Combone School, where she graduated with the intention of becoming a teacher. As a teenager, she was described as silent, weird, and wild, and like other girls of her generation, was fascinated by Brigitte Bardo who came to prominence in the 1956 film And God Created Woman, directed by Roger Vardim. Chapter 2, Career? Chapter 2 Section 1, 1950s Cardinale's first film work was participating, along with classmates, in a short film by French director René Vortier, on Odor, successfully presented at the Berlin Film Festival. The film made her a minor local celebrity, and led to her being spotted by Jacques Baratia, who offered her a minor role in Goha. She accepted it reluctantly after Baratia explained he wanted a Tunisian actress rather than an Italian to star in the main role opposite the Egyptian actor Omar Sharif. The appearance nonetheless marked her feature film debut. The turning point came in 1957 during the Italian Cinema Week in Tunis, 
when she won a competition for the most beautiful Italian girl in Tunisia, with a trip to the Venice Film Festival as first prize. After being spotted by several film producers at the event, she was invited to study at the Experimental Cinematography Center in Rome under Tina Latanzi. She attended briefly as, despite her extremely photogenic looks, she had trouble with her acting assignments. She left at the end of her first term and decided to return home, earning herself a cover story in the popular weekly Epoca triggered by her unexpected decision to turn her back on a career as a film star. Back in Tunis, however, Cardinale discovered unexpectedly that she was pregnant, the result of what she later described as a terrible relationship with a Frenchman, some ten years her senior, which began when she was only seventeen and lasted for about a year. On this discovery, he wanted her to have an abortion, but she decided to keep the child? She solved her problems by signing a seven-year exclusive contract with Franco Cristaldi's production company Weedus. Cristaldi largely managed her early career, and she was married to him from 1966 until 1975. Under the new contract, in 1958, Cardinale was given a minor role with leading Italian actors Vittorio Gasman, Toto, Marcello Mastroianni, and Renato Salvatore in Mario Monicelli's internationally successful criminal comedy Big Deal on Madonna Street. She portrayed Carmelita, a Sicilian girl virtually imprisoned in her home by her overpowering brother. The comedy was a huge success, making Cardinale instantly recognizable. Some newspapers were already referring to her as La Fidanzata d'Italia. Later that year, she had a leading role opposite Yvonne Monlaw in Claudio Gora's romantic comedy Three Strangers in Rome. Although she worked well into her seventh month, Cardinale's pregnancy was kept a tight secret. Tormented by thoughts of suicide, she fell into a state of depression. When she thought she could no longer hide her condition, she asked Cristaldi to terminate her contract. Understanding her predicament, he sent her to London for the birth far away from the press. He simply explained that she had gone to England to learn English for a film. Cristaldi told Cardinale not to reveal her condition as she would be betraying the public and it would put an end to her career. So as to maintain the secret, he drew up a detailed American-style contract covering every little detail of her life, depriving her of any possibility of acting on her own behalf. Cardinale explained, I was no longer master of my own body or thoughts. Even talking with a friend about anything that could make me look different from my public image was risky, as if it had been publicized, I would have been in trouble. Everything was in the hands of Weedus. For seven years, Cardinale kept her secret, not only from the public, but also from her own son, Patrick, who grew up in the family with her parents and sister more or less as a brother until the day Enzo Biagi, a journalist, discovered the truth. After Cardinale decided to tell him everything, he published her story in Oggi and L. Apostrophe A. Ripeo. In 1959, she appeared opposite Salvatore in the Mafia film Vento del Sud, and played the wife of Maurizio Arena in Luigi Zampa's Il Magistrato. Cardinale also starred opposite Pietro Germi in his crime film The Facts of Murder, an important assignment for her in mastering the craft of acting while learning to feel at ease in front of the camera. Cardinale considered it to have been her first real test as an actress. She then played the role of Maria in Ralph Thomas's British film Upstairs and Downstairs, which starred Michael Craig and Anne Haywood. In her early roles, she was usually dubbed, as producers considered her voice too hoarse. Chapter 2 Section 2 1960s. In 1960, Cardinale starred opposite Marcello Mastroianni in Mauro Bolognini's Golden Leopard winning drama film Il Bellantonio. The film marked the start of a fruitful partnership. Cardinale stated that her films with Bolognini were among the most joyful of her career, considering him to be a great director, a man of rare professional capability, great taste and culture. Beyond that, for me personally, a sensitive and sincere friend. In Bolognini's films, thanks to her aesthetic femininity, Cardinale took roles of manipulative women who lead men to perdition. During the filming of Il Bellantonio, her co-star Marcello Mastroianni fell in love with her, but she rejected him, 
as she did not take his love seriously, considering him to be one of those actors who cannot help but fall in love with their co-stars. Mastroianni insisted that his feelings were genuine, even after many years. The genuine empathy between the two actors proved to be ideal for reproducing the tension between the characters in the film. Cardinale next portrayed Pauline Bonaparte in Abel Gonce's French film Napoleon et Austerlitz, and after appearing opposite Gazman and Salvatore in the sequel to Big Deal on Madonna Street, Ordes Colpo dei Soliti Ignoti, she portrayed Ginetta, the fiancé of Spiros Focas, alongside Salvatore and Alain Delon in Lucchino Visconti's critically acclaimed Rocco, and his brothers. However, her leading performance in Francesco Maselli's Silver Spoon set gained her most attention during this period. Francesco Frieda felt the film paved her way to great success, noting the sweetness of her smile which struck a chord with the public. In 1961, Cardinale portrayed a sultry nightclub singer and young mother in Valerio Cellini's Girl with a Suitcase. As a result of her own experience of early motherhood, Cardinale naturally conveyed the concerns of a teenaged mother, identifying fully with the character of Aida. Such was her psychological involvement that she needed several months to overcome her apprehensions and prepare for the part. Cellini chose her for such a difficult role against everyone's advice, as she was not yet considered a real actress, nor was she one of the most celebrated Italian beauties. However, he was very close and supportive of Cardinale during the production, and a true friendship developed between the two, based on a deep mutual understanding. Cardinale remarked, Cellini was one of those who really love women, he had an almost feminine sensitivity. He could understand me at a glance. He taught me everything, without ever making demands on me, he was really very fond of me. Cardinale was warmly praised by the critics for her performance in Girl with a Suitcase, Dennis Schwartz considering her to have been at her charming best. Later in 1961, Cardinale starred as a prostitute opposite Jean Paul Belmondo in Bolognini's La Viexia. Both Girl with a Suitcase and La Viexia were presented at the 1961 Cannes Film Festival. At the time, Cardinale was not considered comparable to the two divas of Italian cinema, Sofia Loren and Gina Lola Brigida, but several newspapers and magazines including Paris Match began to consider her to be a credible young rival to Brigitte Bardo. Cardinale's 1961 appearance is also included on Rie Vernoy's French comedy Les Lions Son Latches, and Auguste in which she had a cameo role. The following year, Cardinale starred opposite Jean-Paul Belmondo as Venus in the 18th-century set adventure Cartouche, which made her a major star in France. She also played Angelina, the romantic interest of Antony Franchosa in Bolognini's Senelita, a character which film writer Jacek Klinowski describes as a spirited and strikingly beautiful 20-year-old. In 1962, Cardinale was interviewed by the writer Alberto Moravia, who focused exclusively on her sexuality and body image in film, treating her as an object. Cardinale remarked to him, I used my body as a mask, as a representation of myself. The interview was published in Esquire under the title The Next Goddess of Love. Cardinale was amused, to discover that the interview had inspired the writer to publish La Di Delamore the following year, in which one of the characters, with her fine physical appearance and natural curves, closely resembled Cardinale. Just a few years later, she played a similar character in a film based on another novel by Moravia, Time of Indifference. The finest and most prolific year of her career was 1963, when she appeared in a number of leading productions. She starred alongside Burt Lancaster in Visconti's The Leopard, portraying a village girl who married a progressive young aristocrat, and played a film actress cast by a director in Federico Fellini's Eight and a Half. Both films were critically acclaimed and are often cited by critics and scholars as among the greatest films ever made. She participated in the two films during exactly the same period, frequently moving from one to the other and experiencing the strictly planned approach of Visconti which contrasted strongly with Fellini's much more relaxed style and his almost total reliance on improvisation. Cardinale remembered Visconti's set, as having an almost religious atmosphere, everything focused on the film, 
far removed the outside world. Visconti needed silence for his work while Fellini preferred noise and confusion. Prior to this period, Cardinale's own voice had not been used in her Italian films, as it was considered too hoarse, and owing to her French accent, insufficiently Italian. Not until eight and a half was she allowed to use her own voice. Cardinale explained, When I arrived for my first movie, I couldn't speak a word. I thought I was on the moon. I couldn't understand what they were talking about. And I was speaking in French, in fact I was dubbed. And Federico Fellini was the first one who used my voice. I think I had a very strange voice. With her portrayal of Angelica in The Leopard and her brief appearance as herself in Eight and a Half, Cardinale achieved the definitive status of a top-ranking star. The same year, Cardinale portrayed a prostitute in La Ragazza di Bube or Bibo's Girl, in which she also used her own voice. For her performance in the film, she received her first Nastro d'Argento for Best Actress in 1965. Cardinale acted in her first American film when she played Princess Dorla, a wealthy aristocratic woman, who is the love and jewelry interest of David Niven in the Cortina Dompezzo set The Pink Panther. Cardinale's voice in the film was dubbed by Gail Garnett, who went uncredited. Niven raved about working with the actress, telling her, after spaghetti, you're Italy's happiest invention. In 1964, Cardinale starred alongside Rod Steger and Shelley Winters in Francesco Maselli's Italian Made Time of Indifference. Thereafter, she spent three years in the United States, where she starred in several Hollywood films. She told of how she benefited from the arrangement, explaining it was an American initiative at a time when they invited all the successful European actresses to perform in their pictures, hoping to create a monopoly. Many suffered from the experience, but she was able to hold her own, I took care of my own interests, blankly refusing to sign an exclusive contract with Universal Studios. I only signed for individual films. In the end, everything worked out fine for me. She first starred in the Henry Hathaway's Hollywood picture Circus World opposite John Wayne and Rita Hayworth, playing the daughter of Hayworth, who performs with her as a mother-daughter circus act. By the end of the decade, she had returned to making films primarily in Italy, accepting a pay cut, turning her back on Hollywood stardom. Cardinale has further said, I don't like the star system. I'm a normal person. I like to live in Europe. I mean, I've been going to Hollywood many, many times, but I didn't want to sign a contract. Film writer David Simpson notes that as a result, Cardinale never achieved the same level of fame as Lorraine and Gina Lola Brigida, although she appeared in a higher number of decent films. In 1964, she also played the lead role in The Magnificent Cuckold, based on the Belgian play Le Cocu Magnifique. She was at the height of her sensuality at the time, but later the film only brought back unpleasant memories for her as she experienced little empathy with the director Antonio Pietrangeli while the male star Ugo Tonazzi tried to seduce her. In 1965, Cardinale appeared in Visconti's Vogue Stelle Deleza, known as Sandra in the US and of These Thousand Pleasures in the UK, playing a Holocaust survivor who may have had an incestuous relationship with her brother. Later that year, she starred opposite Rock Hudson in Universal Pictures's Blindfold, the last film to be directed by Philip Dunn. Filming began on the 22nd of February 1965 on location in Ocala, Florida. Diane Bond doubled for Cardinale in the film. Cardinale became good friends with Hudson, who proved to be very protective of her, knowing her discomfort outside of Italy. While in Hollywood, Cardinale also became friends with Barbara Streisand, Elliot Gould, and Steve McQueen, but she never managed to feel at home there. By 1966, Cardinale was being cited as the most popular film star in Italy, even more than Mastroianni and Lorraine. Life stated that the Cardinale appeal is a blend of solid simplicity and radiant sensuality. It moves men all over the world to imagine her both as an exciting mistress and wife. However, following her success in Hollywood, she began to express concerns about the direction of her career. In a July 1966 interview with Life, 
she confessed her fear of being over-glamorized and exploited, like Sophia Loren, and although she had several further US films lined up, stated, if I have to give up the money, I give it up. I do not want to become a cliché. In 1966, a photograph of Cardinale was featured in the original gatefold artwork to Bob Dylan's album Blonde on Blonde, but it was used without Cardinale's permission and removed from later pressings. That year, she starred in Mark Robson's war picture Lost Command for Columbia Pictures opposite Anthony Quinn, Alan Delon, and George Segal. Quinn expressed his love of working with Cardinale, stating that although he adored Cardinale and Lorraine equally, I relate easier to Claudia, Sophia creates an impression of something larger than life, something unobtainable. But Claudia, she's not easy, still she's within reach. She also played a Mexican Marquisa in Richard Brooks's Western The Professionals, uniting her on screen once again with Burt Lancaster in what she considered to be her best American film. The following year, she appeared in Una Rosa Patuti and in Alexander McKendrick's Sex Fast Don't Make Waves opposite Tony Curtis. Although occasional funny moments were noted, Don't Make Waves was generally panned by the critics and the lack of chemistry with co-star Curtis was highlighted. Leonard Maltin, though, described the film as a gem. At the beginning of 1967, Cristaldi joined her in the United States. While the two were staying in Atlanta, he surprised her by taking her to their wedding ceremony which he had arranged without her knowledge. She went ahead with the ceremony, but was concerned about sacrificing the rights she had to her child Patrick. She also realized she was increasingly unable to make decisions about her own life. The marriage was never made official in Italy. In 1968, Cardinale featured opposite Franco Nero in The Day of the Owl, in a David Di Donatello for Best Actress winning performance. She reunited with Rock Hudson in the Italian made criminal comedy A Fine Pair under director Francesco Maselli. She also appeared alongside Rod Taylor in The Hell with Heroes and starred in one of her best-known roles as former prostitute Jill McBain in Sergio Leone's epic western Once Upon a Time in the West. Such was the power of her performance as the whore that Leone's biographer Robert C. Cumbo described her as permanently engraved in cinematic history and noted how suited to the role she was, her sex goddess appearance combines with her more mystical iconographic associations to ease the progress of Jill from tart to town builder, from harlot to earth mother, from sinner to symbol of America, the apotheosis of the harlot with a heart of gold. In 1969, Cardinale starred opposite Nino Manfredi in Luigi Magni's Nellano del Signore, based on the actual story of the capital execution of two Carbonari in Papal Rome. This was followed by a role as a telephone operator in Sertu Satissimo, Onzi Probable, and as a nurse opposite Sean Connery and Peter Finch in Mikhail Kalatozov's The Red Tent, based on the story of the mission to rescue Umberto Nobile, and the other survivors of the crash of the airship Italia. Chapter 2 Section 3, 1970s In 1970, Cardinale starred opposite Peter McHenry and Eli Wallach in Jerzy Skolomowski's comedy film The Adventures of Gerard, based on the exploits of Brigadier Gerard by Arthur Conan Doyle. In 1971, she formed a duo with Brigitte Bardot in the French Western comedy The Legend of Frenchy King, and appeared as a prostitute opposite Alberto Sordi in Luigi Zampa's comedy A Girl in Australia. The film, shot on location in February and March 1971, earned Cardinale a Best Actress Award at the David Di Donatello Awards the following year. In 1972, Cardinale appeared in Marco Ferreri's Ludienza, which was screened at the 22nd Berlin International Film Festival. She also featured in La Schimuna with Jean-Paul Belmondo and Michel Constantine. After a role as a Russian aristocrat opposite Oliver Reed in One Russian Summer, set in pre-revolutionary Russia, Cardinale starred opposite Franco Nero in Iguapi, a historical drama film with Polizio Testi and noir elements. Cardinale and the director Pasquale Squitieri met for the first time on set, and he soon became her husband. In 1975, Cardinale played the daughter of a political exile in Mauro Bolognini's Libera, My Love, a character who becomes increasingly incensed by the fascist government of Italy and makes a number of bold and very personal gestures against it. 
Later that year she appeared in the comedies The Immortal Bachelor with Vittorio Gasman and Key Comencia L'Aventura with Monica Vitti. Vitti's biographer noted how Cardinale and Vitti stood out as the female duo in a predominantly masculine cast. In 1976, Cardinale appeared in the sex comedy Il Comune Senso del Pudore, which was directed and written by Alberto Sordi, who also co starred. The following year, she had a biblical role as the adulteress in the Jesus of Nazareth miniseries, which featured Robert Powell as Jesus, and Bancroft as Mary Magdalene, and Ernest Borgnine as Cornelius the Centurion. Cardinale starred in her husband's Il Prefetto di Ferro, which tells the story of Cesare Mori, an Italian prefect that before and during the fascist period was best known as the Iron Prefect. The film shared the 1978 David Di Donatello for Best Film Award within Nome del Papa Re. In 1978, Cardinale appeared in Damiano Damiani's political thriller, Goodbye and Amen, Luomo della CIA, and again featured alongside Gemma in her husband's gangster picture, Corleone, set in 1950s Sicily. After a role in another Squitiri film in 1978, Lama, Cardinale portrayed Eliana, a Greek gutsy brothel madam and the girlfriend of Telly Savalas in George Pico Smartos's adventure war film, Escape to Athena. The film, shot on location in Rhodes, was poorly received, it holds a 32% rotten rating on Rotten Tomatoes as of July 2015. Chapter 2 Section 4, 1980s After a role in C. Salvici Vuole, and a smaller part in Peter Zinner's The Salamander opposite Franco Nero, Anthony Quinn, and Christopher Lee, Cardinale played the love interest of Marcello Mastroianni in Liliana Cabani's war picture The Skin, a film which also reunited her with Burt Lancaster. The Skin was entered into the 1981 Cannes Film Festival. In 1982, Cardinale appeared in Werner Herzog's Fitzgeraldo, playing a successful brothel owner who funds Klaus Kinski's purchase of an old steamship in South America. The film, inspired by the story of Peruvian rubber baron Carlos Fermin Fitzgerald, was shot on location in Brazil and Peru. The film was critically acclaimed, with Vincent Canby of the New York Times calling it a fine, quirky, fascinating movie and a stunning spectacle, comparing the dynamic between Kinski and Cardinale to Catherine Hepburn, and Humphrey Bogart in John Huston's The African Queen. He pointed out that although Cardinale's screen time in the film was unfortunately not substantial, she set its comic tone, he praised the way she managed to turn Kinski, renowned for his volatile temperament and portrayals of megalomaniacs and criminals into a genuinely charming screen presence, adding a new dimension to his acting career. Later that year, Cardinale played opposite Pierre Mondi in the sex farce Le Cadeau, a role which biographers Lancia and Minelli say was played with a mature charm and expressiveness. In 1983, Cardinale had a role in the Waris Hussein miniseries Princess Daisy, and featured alongside Lino Ventura and Bernard Girardeau in the French-Canadian film Le Ruffian. In 1984, she played the love interest of Marcello Mastroianni in a Marco Bellocchio production of Henry IV based on the Luigi Pirandello play of the same name. It was entered into the 1984 Can Film Festival. Squeetiri's Claretta, featuring Cardinale and Gemma, was entered into the competition of the 41st Venice International Film Festival. Cardinale's powerful performance as Claretta Patacci garnered her the Nastro d'Argento for Best Actress. In 1985, Cardinale starred opposite Ben Gazzara and Lina Sastri in Alberto Bevilacqua's La Donna del Mervillier. It entered the competition at the 1985 Venice International Film Festival. In 1986, Cardinale was involved in the making of two films for television. In Comincini's La Storia, Cardinale portrayed a widow raising a son during World War II. In her husband's Naso di Cain, a miniseries, Enrico Lancia and Roberto Poppi praised her for her light comic touch. In 1987, Cardinale starred opposite Peter Coyote, Greta Scacchi, and Jamie Lee Curtis in Diane Carrizzi's film A Man in Love, Carrizzi's first English-language feature. It was entered into the 1987 Cannes Film Festival. 
Cardinale's performance as Scatchy's cancer-stricken mother was praised by critics, with Dessen Howe of the Washington Post highlighting the warm and radiant elements that she brought to the role, and Hal Hinson, also of the Post, comparing Scatchy to having the same kind of sensuality that Cardinale brought to her earlier roles. After a role in the comedy, Blue Electrico, Cardinale portrayed Yolande de Palastron, a favorite of Marie Antoinette's, in the two-part film La Révolution Française in 1989. Made to celebrate the bicentennial anniversary of the French Revolution, the 360-minute Robert Enrico and Richard T. Heffron film, was an international production, boasting a cast which included Klaus Maria Brandauer, Jane Seymour, and Peter Ustinov. Chapter 2 Section 5 1990s. In 1990, Cardinale starred opposite Bruno Kremer in Squitieri's Atto di Dolore, and appeared in the Morocco set Soviet Italian production, La Battaglia dei Tre Tamburi di Fuoco. In 1991, Cardinale featured alongside Richard Berry and Omar Sharif in Henri Vernoy's Mayrig, a film about the struggles of an Armenian family that emigrates to Marseille in France from Turkey after the Armenian Genocide of 1915. Such was the success of the film that Vernoy made a sequel the following year, 588, Rue Parody, also featuring the cast. Cardinale was praised by critics for her role as the mother, the Armenian General Benevolent Union of America noted the flawless performance of these intrepid actors, especially of Claudia Cardinale. In 1993, Cardinale won the Leon Doro Alla Carriera Award at the Venice Film Festival, in which she was honored along with Roman Polanski, Robert De Niro, and Steven Spielberg. Cardinale agreed to reunite with Blake Edwards, Herbert Lom, and Bert Cook to celebrate the 30th anniversary of The Pink Panther by making Son of the Pink Panther. It was Edwards' last film, but was a critical and commercial failure, with critics despairing at the painfully unfunny script and the performance of Roberto Benigni as Cluzo, which earned him the Razzie Award for Worst New Star. As of July 2015, it has a rating of just 6% on Rotten Tomatoes based on 34 reviews. In 1994, Cardinale had a role in Charlotte Dubreuil's El Ni Ponce Croissier, and the following year appeared in the French TV serial 10-07, Laffaire Zeus. In 1997, Cardinale featured in the British-Italian television drama miniseries Nostromo, directed by Alistair Reed and produced by Fernando Ghia of Pixit Productions, a co-production with Radio Televisione Italiana, Television Española, and WGBH Boston. It is described as an adaptation of Joseph Conrad's epic story Nostromo of political upheaval, greed, and romance in turn of the 20th century South America. Cardinale and the cast were nominated for an Alma Award for Outstanding Latino A cast in a made for television movie or miniseries. Later in 1997, Cardinale appeared in the films Sule Pied des Femmes and Her Husband's Stupor Mundi, in which she portrayed Constance of Aragon. In 1998, Cardinale portrayed the mother of Lola Neymark in the French picture Riches, Bells, etc a wealthy baroness who leaves her hotel to her daughter to care for during her absence. The following year, Cardinale played the peasant mother of two children who are members of Carmen Croco's army during the Garibaldi era, in Cristaldi's historical film Lee Chiamarono. Briganti. Poorly received, the film was boycotted, and the producers have since refused to assign the broadcasting rights. Chapter 2 Section 6, 2000s in 2000, Cardinale embarked on her stage career, starring in Maurizio Scaparo's stage production of La Veneziana, adapted by René de Secati, at the Théâtre du Rhône-Point in Paris. She also appeared in her husband's television film, Elizabeth, Ills on Two Nos on Fon. Two years later, Cardinale went on a theatrical tour of Italy, performing in Luigi Pirandello's Come to Me Voi, which Squitieri directed. She appeared as what Roger Ebert described as a faded countess opposite Jeremy Irons in Claude Lelouch's thriller film and now. Ladies and gentlemen, portraying a character who spends her time in Fez, Morocco, with handsome gigolos. The film was screened out of competition at the 2002 Cannes Film Festival. And now. 
ladies and gentlemen receive mixed reviews, a, o Scott of the New York Times dismissed it as sublimely silly, but praised the impeccable cinemascope compositions and the lush, suave score by Michel Legrand. In 2005, Cardinale appeared in a Philippe Adrian stage production of Tennessee Williams's Sweet Bird of Youth, and in the 2006-2007 season also featured in another Williams play, The Glass Menagerie, directed by Andrea Liberovici, in which she played the character of Amanda. In 2007, Cardinale appeared in the Alienism and comedy film Cherche Fiancé to Frey Pay, opposite Alexandra Lamy and Bruno Solomon, in a role which Patrick Besson described as atrocious. After a role in the TV movie Hold Up a L'Italien, the following year Cardinale starred in the critically acclaimed The String, playing a Tunisian mother who has a tempestuous relationship with her French-educated gay son. Michael D. Clem of Cinemaqueer.com reflected on how the film broke many of the taboos with interracial sexuality and homosexuality. He praised Cardinale's terrific acting and portrayal of the overbearing mother, likening one scene, where she brings home a nice girl for Malik to meet, to Harold and Maud. Chapter 2 Section 7, 2010s In 2010, Cardinale received the Golden Orange Best Actress Award at the 47th Antalya Golden Orange International Film Festival for her performance as an elderly Italian woman who takes in a young Turkish exchange student in Signora Enrica. The Turkish-Italian co-production was shot in locations in Istanbul and Rimini. In 2012, Cardinale featured opposite Jean Moreau and Michael Lawnsdale in the final feature film to be directed by Portuguese director Manuel de Oliveira. Gebo and the Shadow. Critically acclaimed, it has a rare 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, and was shown at the 69th Venice International Film Festival. The Hollywood Reporter described it as the ensemble of superb older performers who comprise the remainder of the dramatis personae. Another excellent film in which Ms. Cardinale acted, released in 2012, was The Artist and the Model. In this, she starred along with Jean Rochefort. In 2013, Cardinale starred alongside supporting actresses Patricia Black and Chloe Kuhn in Nadia Soul's Joy de V, and had a role in Ernst Gorsner's war drama The Silent Mountain, a love story set in the Dolomite Mountains at the outbreak of World War I between Italy and Austria-Hungary in 1915. Gorsner described her as a terrific spirit on the set, and noted that Cardinale told the production team legendary stories about Marcello Mastroianni. In 2014, Cardinale portrayed a sympathetic Italian chaperone Viscountess in the British period drama film Effie Gray, which was written by Emma Thompson and featured Dakota Fanning in the lead role. While promoting Effie Gray, in an interview Cardinale said, I still continue to work, it's 142 movies now. Usually when you are old you don't work anymore, but I still work, which is good. I've been very lucky because I've had many fantastic directors with me, Fellini, Visconti, Blake Edwards, lots and lots. On the 11th of October 2018 she received the Tabernus de Cine Award in the Almeria Western Film Festival. Chapter 3, Personal Life Claudia Cardinale met the Italian film producer Franco Cristaldi in 1958. According to Cardinale, the couple had a marriage party but did not marry, and they became increasingly detached. Cristaldi later married Zudia Rea, and had no further contractual relationships with Cardinale. Cardinale lived with Pasquale Squitieri, an Italian film director, for 42 years from 1975 until Squitieri died on 18 February 2017, aged 78. Cardinale has two children, Patrick, who was born illegitimately when she was 19 and later adopted by Cristaldi, and Claudia, whom she had with Squitieri. Cardinale is fluent in Arabic, French, Italian, English, and Spanish. Her niece Francesca is also an actress. Cardinale is a political liberal who has supported feminist and gay causes over the years. Although she lives in Paris, Cardinale is fiercely outspoken about being identified as an Italian. She has been a UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador for the Defense of Women's Rights since March 2000, 
and was a goodwill ambassador for the UNESCO World Water Day for 2006. Cardinale published an autobiography with Anne Mori, Io Claudia, to Claudia, in 1995. She has been a regular attendee of the Academy Awards. Her awards have included an honorary Golden Lion at the 1993 Venice Film Festival, and an honorary Golden Bear at the 2002 Berlin Film Festival. The Los Angeles Times Magazine, in a February 2011 online feature, named Cardinale among the 50 most beautiful women in film history. Cardinale said of her acting, I never felt scandal and confession were necessary to be an actress. I've never revealed myself or even my body in films. Mystery is very important. In a 2014 interview, she revealed her secret of success, if you want to practice this craft, you have to have inner strength. Otherwise, you'll lose your idea of who you are. Every film I make entails becoming a different woman. And in front of a camera, no less. But when I'm finished, I'm me again. Chapter 3 Section 1, Sources